So in the process of making my very first end grain cutting board, I realized very quickly that I didn't have all the tools that I probably should have at this point. And so I guess we're making a crosscut sled. Now, this is the first time I've made a crosscut sled, so I wanted to make sure this thing had all the features that I could possibly want in a crosscut sled, knowing that this is probably not gonna be the last one I ever make. And I'm not actually sure why I waited this long to build a crosscut sled, because I can honestly say this is probably the best shop project I've made to date. And if you are starting out in woodworking or if you've been woodworking for a long time and you don't have a crosscut sled, I can say this now, you're wrong. And I'm not saying this because it came out really well, even though it did. I'm saying this because it just increases the accuracy and the efficiency of your shop having that crosscut sled. Not to mention the safety part of it, because we all know that using a table saw, I mean, let's face it, can be one of the most unsafe things you could do in a wood shop. So to this point, we've got our base and now we're working on both the front and the rear fences. And I decided I was just gonna glue them up together and stack them because I thought that was the best way to ensure that how flat they can be. And I was a little excessive on the clamps, but you can never be too safe, right? After getting them out of clamps, it's perfect time to put a nice clean edge on one side of it. And this process is the exact same process you'd use if you were dimensioning rough lumber. We're essentially just breaking down larger pieces of wood to smaller pieces to match our intention. Once that was done, it was next to start tackling the T-track that's gonna go on the top of our sled. And I did this the best way I knew how using a dado stack. But I've learned my lesson in the past and I know better than using your actual work piece for your first go. This first groove I put in there it just didn't fit quite right, so I cut it again and I think we dialed it in perfectly. In order to put the grooves in our base now, I just cut it on one side, flip the board over and cut it on the other side. Then I tested it on the top just to make sure that I wasn't over our T-Track slots. And if you guys are enjoying this so far, I'd like to invite you guys to visit my Instagram page where you can get a lot of the behind the scenes action and you can follow my process as I try to grow as a woodworker and show my vulnerability as I'm learning. And one of the things I've learned through research and through some of the videos I've seen here on YouTube is that woodworking tools can not only cut wood, but they can also cut aluminum. So that's exactly what I did here and then I just use my file to clean up those rough edges. On my fence here, I just wanted softer edges and this is totally optional. So I just put some round corners on there which I could cut with my bandsaw, but I could just as easily use my jigsaw to knock it out nice and quickly. And what's not perfect here, I can fix on my oscillator and sander. The other thing that this fence does for us with this decorative edge is it allows us to trim some weight. Now there are other means of trimming weight, but this is going to be just fine for our application. Now I'm using this Craig top track here in our front fence just so that I can put tape measure and a stop lock that you guys will check out later on in the build. Here's one of those situations where we have to make a cost benefit analysis. And in this cost benefit analysis, it's whether or not it makes sense for us to break out the dado stack for the amount of cuts we're gonna make. And in my case, my decision was to not break out the dado stack. We're only making this one, call it two cuts, to get rid of this chunk of wood. And I don't think it's necessary at all. As you can see that this plywood is very forgiving. So it just called for a one third pass just to clean up the edges that were left from the first two. And the top track fits in this perfectly. The next problem that we need to solve is how are we going to affix this to our fence? And that's easy. We're just gonna drill some holes in it using our drill press because it's very soft aluminum and it drills through very nicely. Once this situation is taken care of, I can turn my attention over to the runners. And if you've watched my video on my bandsaw sled, you know I've made mention of a particular medium called UHMW, which essentially is just like a hard plastic. 
And I'll link that video down below because that bandsaw came out pretty good as well. But I'm using this UHMW as my runners because I thought it would hold up to moisture in the shop. It's already the perfect size for my miter slot and what could go wrong, right? When it comes to attaching our T-Track to our sled, if you remember, we cut pretty deep slots in the top of our sled. So that kind of came at a little bit of a cost here. So in order to attach it, I'm gonna have to modify these screws that I already have because I don't feel like going to the store to figure out if they make screws small enough for this. So using my rusty diagonal pliers, I was able to cut off a piece of them just right so that they don't poke through the bottom of our sled and scrape up our saw. I put a couple washers in our miter slots and then some double-sided tape on the runners. And this was to ensure that I was able to get it just right and be able to turn it over where we can put in our screws. Once I did that, it's sliding in the slots just as we thought they would. There's a little bit of friction there, but I'm thinking at this point that's perfectly okay. Now, if we go back to the miter slots where we're putting in those small screws, it kind of wasn't enough for me. So I opted for some five minute epoxy along with the screws in order to affix them to our slots. A 45 degree chamfer on our rear fence allows a place for the dust to hide so it doesn't mess up the flatness of our workpiece when we're trying to cut it. Once that's completed, we're ready to put in our screws on our T-top track. This was pretty good. I use a Vix bit to get it self-centered. And this is a perfect time for me to let you know, I'm gonna put a link to all the products I use in the description below so you know exactly what I use to accomplish this product. Now, the front fence is pretty easy. We know where that's gonna be and that's not really where our accuracy is gonna come into play. So we went ahead and permanently to fix that. Once that's set, we can go ahead and raise our blade and start to give it its inaugural cut. This part was a little bit scary, but it's also nice to see that your work is starting to come to fruition. Now let's concentrate on the other fence here. I'm gonna square it up with my framing square, and that's just kinda of gonna get me a rough estimate of where we need to be here, based off of the slot created by our blade. I'm gonna throw in two screws here, and the purpose of these two screws here is one is gonna be permanently affixed, and the other one is going to be temporary that we may or may not have to move after we square it up. I use William Ng's five cut method on squaring up my cross cut sled. And I'll put a link down in the description to the process because there's a little bit to it, but it's not bad. So there will be some math, but he goes over in depth on how you can accomplish it. Essentially, you take your first four thin strip cuts, turning your square or rectangle four times, and on that fifth cut, you take about an inch cut, and then you use your calipers to figure out the difference between the top of your cut and the back of your cut. And then you make an adjustment using a feeler gauge and a point, and try not to drop your clamp like I did. Hold on, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Yeah, wear your safety glasses because uh, let me tell you from experience, dust does not belong in your eyes or your lungs. So once that part is done, I did the five cut method again and I was exactly where I needed to be. You know, at least it was good enough for me. At this point, we were able to fix our fence permanently and then I thought it would be a perfect time to install a little blade guard because we know that we like to put our hands in places where they don't belong. So I just stacked two pieces of off-cut plywood and then I glued it on using some thick set and put my brand on it because that's what us woodworkers do. It's mine, but I also want everybody to know that it's mine. It's bizarre, I know, but we all do it. Well, at this point, I'm starting to get a little bit excited because it's it's now starting to turn into something. It's starting to look like my vision and everything is starting to work out perfectly. But if you guys are picking up on the tone, something didn't work out quite according to plan. You guys are gonna have to stay tuned to figure out what that is though. So I threw in another extra brand on there. I got my tape in there and then I was able to start playing like a kid here, sliding my little stop block side to side, adding 
my little toggle clamps here, and it's starting to look like a sled, guys, I have to say. Once playtime was over, I figured, why don't we cut our first piece and see how square we actually are? So I cut two pieces and I used them to compare against each other in the most scientific way I know how, by feel, and it came out perfectly. So at this point, we're putting it to work. We got our cutting board here. I'm cutting off the edge here that I used to clamp to glue it up. And then let's take care of those fingers that are sticking out the other end. And at this point, I'm still feeling like something's not quite right. It's taking a lot of effort for me to push this through. So at this point, I'm starting to figure out that it's actually the runners. It might be me or it could just be the runners in general with the slots on this DeWalt saw, but they seem to have swelled a little bit when we screwed them in and they just weren't sliding perfect. So I had some more of this Ipe wood laying around the shop that I used on my bandsaw sled. And I said, well, this is a pretty stable wood. The grain's running in the right direction. Let me give that a try. So I fixed it to the bottom of the sled the best way I know how. I pulled the blade up and I brought the fence over and I attached it using some CA glue and some activator. Then I had the opportunity to put a couple screws in it and uh, let me tell you how tough this wood is. Look at this. Ipe has gotta be one of the hardest woods known to man. If anybody knows what it is on the janker scale, let me know in the comment section below. I love the fact that I can fine tune the fit with a little bit of sandpaper and then some paste wax, but let's see if we have a difference here. I don't know if you could tell by the excitement in my arms, but this is not better, it's way better. <laughs> 